Today on the Nerdy Gritty, another pop culture news grab bag. What's up, guys? Welcome back to the Nerdy Gritty, where we delve deep into the details of pop culture. I am Dez. And I'm Fox. Uh, There is some big news in the X-Men universe right now. Ooh. So if you may or may not know, uh, basically the House of X, Powers of Ten, which were two storylines. This is comics, by the way, in the comic realm. Uh, Two storylines basically designed to essentially reboot the X-Men. Okay. It's it's again in the comic in the comic way of not just starting from scratch. It's just kind of like don't worry about what's happened before this. This is now what's important kind of thing. It's actually I think did it better than like the rebirth uh where in the rebirth that was a reboot but things that happened before still mattered right. and are still very relevant. Anyway, with this you could have never read an X-Men comic and you would maybe miss out on some of like the historical things, mm-hmm. but it, you'd be fine. So anyway, those those finished uh, last last week. Powers of Ten Six came out. It was two six issue series. They alternated weeks, so we had that. It was incredible. It was a really really good. Uh, just I mean, it's two te- technically two series, but it was one intertwining thing. Really great. And then that ki- uh, that was leading to the dawn of X. This whole new like zeitgeist of the X Men mutant universe. Good word. Uh, thank you. Uh, so X Men, <laughs> <laughs> X Men One, uh, came out this week, and it has fire. It has, it has uh, added some fuel to the internet theory that has been around. And I don't want to say internet theory. I mean, it's pretty well like right. What else could this be? But they may have uh, finally answered or or put to rest. The whole Cyclops, Wolverine, Jean, Jean Grey, Grey issue. Love triangle. I've seen this. Have you? Yeah. Okay. This so is weird. So there's some things. There's some things going on. Uh, I did notice this when I was reading because uh, Mister Sinister, like right, all the mutants are back. Like mutants are just a thing now. Apocalypse is a main character good guy. Good guy. It's super weird. That is weird. But it's essentially, hey, we're we have created a new society for for mutants. All mutants are welcome. There is a general amnesty. And Apocalypse, because Moira McTagg, it's a big thing. Yeah. But he's come and he's accepted. Now there's there's some hints that, like, there's some kind of brief, like, panels of just seeing him, like, brooding in the corner where you're like, I don't know. Maybe <laughs> in the future, Apocalypse will be a bad guy His again. name is Apocalypse, so. <laughs> right, right. But hey, maybe, world ender. Maybe How he'll be you? the end. Maybe he'll be the end of uh, of Krakoa. Not not the whole world. Maybe he'll. It's still bad. Yeah, no, still bad. Anyway, just <laughs> saying. So, but there was a uh, there was an issue where basically it was kind of weird and it felt like out of nowhere, but I think it was a method to like foreshadow things where it was top 10 sinister secrets. And it was like Mr. Sinister. It was just like a list. Like there's a lot of graphs and charts and stuff that exposition is told through mm-hmm. in the series. Very, very interesting it's a really cool uh, delivery method in how it's presented, but it's like top 10 sinister secrets. And one of them I'm going to read for you right now. Uh, he's the best at what he does. She's married with a kid. The husband knows exactly what's going on, but who is he to point the finger? He's up to much the same and more. Maybe this is just the new normal on mutant Island. So that was like, interesting yeah and then in x-men number one mild spoilers if you haven't read it um not really about the story but just about kind of what's in the book so it shows there's a lot of like floor plans and stuff like the first one the the main x-men series is going to be kind of a it's gonna be interesting but it's it's about the summer family and their summer house which is because comics on the moon of course, and that's exists where, that's where because belongs. yeah, whatever. But it shows a floor plan of how it's like laid out and like the different levels, and then how people's individual rooms are. So, so you're weird. like, why is this in yeah. here? <laughs> and it's probably for this specifically. There are clusters of three rooms, uh, like kind of arrayed in a circle, and on the right side there is there are rooms ten, eleven, and twelve. Jean Grey's, Wolverines, and Cyclops, and all three of them have a door in between each other. Mm-hmm. Whereas the other clusters of rooms do, do not, not have that. And so it the 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 theory is are they in a polyamorous relationship? relationship. And yeah. there possibly is even more. Like it's hinting at 
he's you know cyclops he's doing much the same so yeah it's interesting because one of the three tenets of like the three main laws of krakoa that the council put together which is lots of stuff going on there there's like no harming mutants I forget the second one. And the third one is make more mutants. And so there's a theory that this is just kind of how it is. Like we have to make more mutants like, to, yeah, esta- breed. to establish, yes, to yeah. breed, to establish our like country. Anyway, Fox, what have you been up to, man? Um, a whole lot. Yeah. Um, I've watched a lot of movies. You with your and- stupid <laughs> regal past. Stupid. Or whatever You're just it jealous, is. jealous, man. You're just it's jealous. exactly that. Yes. Uh, yeah, I've seen six movies so far with that thing and I got it. L- two weeks ago today um which really isn't that much anyway uh so let's see i'll start with some movies i've seen a bunch so i'm gonna go through them real quick because i don't want to bore everybody to death um too late yeah that's fair i finished (laughs) the scream trilogy the original scream trilogy there's a scream four it's not really available to watch so i haven't seen it yet but um i really liked i really liked the whole trilogy i never saw three three was like just the same as two and one where it's yeah. self-referential and meta the whole way through. Like in there's they, they get So in one and two, there's the, the character that uh, works at the video store and he's like, this is how horror movies work. Obviously this is going to happen. And this is, and then that thing happens. Yeah. Well, he dies in the second one. And in the third one, they get around it by just like, he recorded a video of himself talking about trilogies. <laughs> like, you're like, okay, this is lame, but they need, they felt like they had to have that scene again. I watched a movie I really shouldn't have because I don't like horror, but this no, one, no. What did I you watch? The movie hereditary. Have you heard, you of, heard of it? No. no, it is. It's one of those movies that I could see being like, remembered like the shining yeah. or the exorcist. I've got more to talk about, but I want you to talk now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. I watched Toy Story 4. Ah, okay. Yeah. And it was really good. Obviously, all the Toy Story movies are really, really good. Sure. Uh, I did very much like, so spoilers for Toy Story 4 here, but they put a very obvious rap on the storyline. And I feel th- like they do that every time, though. <laughs> See? The third one, it felt like that for sure. Yeah. The third one, although, although I, I could even say that it just moved it to a new chapter. Yeah. And the fourth one picked up on that chapter. This one felt like an ending, like a real, okay. real ending. Good. I like it. And yeah. Uh, if you guys don't know, I got my third back surgery in nine months. Got the, you hit, going, going for the hat trick. Hat trick. The hat trick. Yeah. So I'm on bed rest yet again. And yesterday I was home alone for the entire day. My in-laws watching the kids, my wife at work. And I watched i binge watched two and a half seasons of the office (laughs) i'm so happy because now you're gonna get jokes (laughs) and find out that it's a funny show here's what i'll say it's fun it's good i enjoy it repeat viewings are funnier maybe that's what it's gonna be you know that you know the jokes and you're so excited so but like i i don't enjoy it any more than any other typical tv show I watch it like if it weren't for Jim and Pam, I probably would not continue. They they are the it. emotional core. They are they, absolutely. It's, a, it's yes. like any any movie. It can be funny. It can be scary. It can be whatever. But if you don't connect with any any of the characters on a human level, then it doesn't matter. Right. And same with The Office. And Jim and Pam are the best. Uh. So oh, all right, you keep going. I'm excited for you to continue watching it. Um. I'm gonna go with two more movies that I'll give ultra fast reviews to that cool. have been in theaters recently. Uh, Ad Astra. Brad yeah, Pitt Brad sci-fi Pitt. movie. I've heard mixed things. <sighs> yes, it had, it had the like, it had some good, good sci-fi, but there it was punctuated by these moments of violence, which didn't really feel natural. And then Gemini Man, the Will Smith, yeah, Will Smith twin movie. movie. That that movie looked fun and exciting to me. I don't, I don't want to say it looked good. It looked like I would enjoy it though. There were some interesting things, but it was mostly just by the numbers. What you like? Yeah, it, it looked like exactly what I expected. The only problem of an was, movie. so this movie was filmed in 120 frames per second. Whoa, 4K! Like that was how it was supposed to be seen. Okay. The problem is, there were like 16 theaters in the world that yeah. can show that. I uh, onto the video game side of things, uh, just playing uh, Slay the Spire some more. Been doing the the Sailor Moon run, trying do, to. Do you know be- that there are games? Other than Slay the Spire. Wait. What? 
<laughs> they have made games before and after that that one came out. I don't understand. Oh, wait, 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 wait. Like, you're talking about the mods? Yeah. Yeah, just from mods from <laughs> Slay yeah, the Spire. the mods yeah, exactly. from Slay the Spire. That's all there is. Um, Superman Year One. Yeah. It's part of the DC Black Label series. Right. Where they kind of put more, I guess, money into it, where it's like, let's get some more well-known creators and let them have free reign over writing the story. Mm-hmm. What'd you think? It was okay. It yeah. Was, it was all right. I was disappointed. Yeah. I'll, I'll agree with that. Especially after the first issue. Weird. I thought the first issue was excellent. Yeah, the first issue was cool, other than the art was a little <coughs> weird. Mostly Frank because Miller. the... Well, uh, John Romita Jr. The um, the kids all just had giant heads. <laughs> That's yeah. just... It's yeah, small it's just the style. And giant heads. Yeah. yeah, it was just... Again, yeah. not saying it was bad art, but it just wasn't my style. Yeah. But what really got me was the amount of human connection that they gave Clark Kent, and that's good, only for them to just literally forget about it in the yes. future. Yeah. yeah. Uh, but that's where we have to end yeah, our, our discussion here. We're Wait, moving on. Wait, I have on. five more things. <clears throat> well, kidding. go jump off a bridge. Okay. Let's get down to the nerdy gritty. Let's. Hey guys, before we continue, we just want to let you know that what you just heard was actually an edited down version of the full podcast. Uh, We call it the short version. If you'd like to listen to what we call the director's cut, we'd really appreciate for you to head on over to our Patreon. That's patreon.com slash Fox. At our second and third tiers, we offer an unedited version of our podcast, as well as all of our Patreon exclusive content. This means that videos that come out early or when we talk about uh, new stuff that we're doing a lot of that shows up on our patreon or if we record an entire game through we do the entire playthrough and put it on patreon in one big chunk and so you can binge watch that all kinds of cool things like that happen to our patreon all the time but if that's not something that you can do we totally understand we just love when you guys support us in any way that you can so when you like comment share or rate us that means the world to us Thanks again, guys, and enjoy the podcast. So a lot of different things have been going on, and for once, Fox and I thought to ourselves, you know what? There's a lot of things, but we don't have a lot to say about right. all of them, right? which is very rare for us. Oh, I could I could make stuff up, but yeah. that's not, that's not going to be good for anybody. So we're going to be hitting, oh, we've done a couple of these before, what's called, just we call it grab bag, which means that there are a few little things going on in the world of pop culture, and we want to touch on all of them. Yeah. So we're going to bounce between these here. Uh, let's start off with probably the one that isn't as, like huge i guess isn't as known maybe by our fandom and that's sesame street yeah 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 it's not wait quite... hold on could you tell me how to get how to get to sesame street so if you head west on stark there okay <laughs> good to know uh so sesame street if you guys didn't know this is owned by hbo yeah uh, this is a relatively new thing right they've had it for a, a year or two now i think and hbo <sighs> has recently decided to have Sesame Street exclusively air like new episodes and everything if I'm correct. New their new episodes air on air on HBO. HBO Go. HBO Go their, their, streaming, their streaming service. service. Right. Yeah. I to honestly I haven't had internet tell or not television uh, cable television or anything like that sure. in so long I forget that it's a thing. <laughs> uh, to me it's exclusively streaming services. But this is something that a lot of people have been frustrated <sighs> and upset with. Because you have this show that is iconically for everybody. Its goal is to, you know, get everybody to see it. And now HBO has essentially put it behind this paywall of their own streaming service. And so this is just kind of something that's really interesting, particularly because, well, I I could go on and on. So first I want to turn this over to you, Fox. What did you first think when you heard that, you know, okay, here's Sesame Street. Here's this iconic classic television show which has now been purchased by HBO and now they're putting it behind a paywall. It's been a couple of years. It's kind of gotten, okay. It's a problem. Sesame street history. Like it's, I, I would, I don't know if I watched Sesame street as a child, okay. but I do know that it's point is to speak to kids about things that are relevant to kids. Yes. I've seen recently that they created a character whose parent, mom or dad or something in that vein is either addicted to opioids, is addicted or, in some way, or an alcoholic <clears throat> in that way. Like sure, 
uh there was uh like a person like a character experiencing homelessness like they do these things very intentionally because that's what kids deal with right and it worked extremely well because it was on pbs public broadcasting a basically free sh- free channel right i mean it was paid for in a part by tax dollars but it and viewers was like you and viewers like you uh but that meant that everybody could watch it if they mm-hmm. had a tv that's why that show it's the it, same with like uh mr rogers neighborhood and and things like that which were to speak to children on a a level of understanding that they could comprehend about things that are hard to deal with yeah and the the problem now is that it's exclusively on a premium content like channel that is inherently it's now inherently behind a paywall yeah you are made like that you now have to give money to watch the new episodes of this which part of me wants to say well that's how it works like that's that's just business like you can still watch old episodes they'll still be relevant a lot of times you just can't watch the new ones that sucks but the other part of me is like why guy like this this feels <laughs> it feels like a level of greed that it, just like it feels uh what's the word i'm looking for uh it makes my skin crawl a little yeah. bit like uh, that's the depth you're willing to sink to HBO to get viewers. Yes. Is to force people to pay for Sesame for Street. Sesame Street. Oh, yeah, sure. Your new Watchmen show or Dra- Game of Thrones. Absolutely. Whatever. Yeah. But Sesame Street. <laughs> Come on, son. Come on, son. It's it's a weird choice. I uh, If you guys have never heard of Defunct Land, it's a YouTube channel and it's phenomenal. Kevin Perjurer does it. And it's- oh, I'm sorry. It's HBO Max that they're streaming app and channel. I just want to be relevant but it's really good uh defunct land is yeah and they do a lot of different things but uh, they did a whole series on jim henson once from him as a child and doing puppeteering and creating puppets and wanting to get into television and loving television etc etc et but jim henson's entire goal his purpose for sesame street was i want to educate as many children as possible there are inner, like the reason it's on Sesame Street and it's in in an inner city area mm-hmm. is because he saw that inner city kids weren't getting as great of an education as others. Yeah, and so he wanted to create a show that they could watch on television that would educate them like a preschool. And I mean, honestly and truly, I credit Sesame Street with teaching my first two kids the alphabet. Oh yeah, yeah, absolutely. Like obviously, my wife and I helped. We we talked sure. about that stuff, but. They love Sesame Street and they watched it a ton. And there's all the letters and the sounds that they make are all in there. You have a letter of each episode and we used it and it worked phenomenally. And, but by the time that my third child was born, it wasn't on Netflix anymore. Hmm. And so Jim Henson's entire goal was to make this as accessible as possible to everybody. They're, they're not just taking that dream away from a beloved man who has since passed but the dude's got to be rolling over in his grave. Yeah, yeah like, it's a real problem. Th- this is exactly, this isn't just not Jim Henson's wishes. This is exactly against it's Jim the Henson's. the opposite. Yeah, the it's exact antithesis. opposite. And so, I mean, if you take a look at all the shows that Jim Henson had made with Sesame Street and Fraggle Rock and the Muppets and Muppet Babies and things like that, then you see how, how much he just wanted to appeal to people. Yeah. And how much he loved people and wanted to be able to reach out to them. And putting that behind a paywall, it's like... Nope. <laughs> it's like, okay, we have money and we'd like to give it to children in Africa, but you Americans need to pay us money before we give this to the it's, children it's in like, Africa. It's like seeing a, like a, you know, if you buy this product, we'll donate $10 to this charity. Right. Like, what, what? Just give them the money. Just give man. them the money. <laughs> I don't want your product. Give them the money. You know what it really reminds me of? And this is actually, in my brain, a really good comparison. The dude who jacked up the prices on insulin or whatever. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, Martin Shkreli. Yeah. The and pharma douche. Yeah, exactly. And you're like, you know what, man? We live in a capitalistic society. You can do that. Yeah, he sure. got put in jail for other reasons. But... Yes, thank goodness. <laughs> you can do that. Sure, fine, whatever. It doesn't make you any less of an awful person. Right, though. right. You're a horrific human being, and we all sit together, and we look at you, and we hate you. Like, and you're 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 the worst. And now I kind of feel that way about HBO. Yeah, it's a real problem. Like, I was considering I want to watch the new Watchmen. Right. Uh, 
but I don't know if I will. Yeah. I might just wait and somehow see it another way or just go without. Or you know what? If HBO said, because there's like 48 seasons of Sesame Street yes. now or something. Like that. Yeah. If HBO said 40 seasons, free to watch. Well, I mean, to be fair, there it is still in syndication in some places, I believe. Um, It's mostly new episodes and they haven't been forthcoming with how those episodes are going to be put out afterward like, right is it just gonna like but or is it some point gonna be on if hbo bought it and said 40 seasons free to watch yeah go on you know or or what netflix did was here are 30 of great episodes from yep. the history of sesame street right watch them you know and they did like co- collection one then they took all of those off and put on collection two yeah and they just did that a little bit at a time and it was awesome and it was great and we watched it constantly for it you know what? Again, I would appreciate HBO for that, and I think that would honor Jim, Henson, Jim Henson's re- w- wishes. Yeah. But then for them to also say, if you want any of the other episodes and any new episodes, that's behind a paywall. Sure. I think that'd still be fine. At the end of the day, we do have like it costs money to make it. Yes, absolutely. So like we can't just say, "Hey, make this." I mean, you could afford it. You've still got your your Game of Thrones right. money, and probably your Watchmen money coming up, and your other series that you're you're making and also Game of if Thrones you just looked and... at the world and said hey we're hbo but we'd also still like to make sesame street free to watch your everybody yeah like please donate <laughs> yeah or, or something like that like people did before <laughs> yeah they're gonna keep doing that yeah this very much to me just seems like a greedy cash grab yeah like a, let's, how can we get the small child demographic <laughs> the we parents. pander a lot to to old older people with Game of Thrones and Watchmen and whatever other shows they have. I don't even know. How can we get four-year-olds to give us money? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I can see That's Mr. like HBO. HBO executives around like this executive <laughs> conference room and all of them just going. <laughs> <laughs> they'll, have, they'll have lights underneath them so that it's like <laughs> casting Shining light. Like a, yeah. Yeah evil shadows across their that's face. the only light in the room yeah well they they set it up that way yeah exactly They lean into it <laughs> it's a real problem i mean public pressure is what's going to change it i think yeah I, th- I think so too public pressure will probably eventually change that and they'll come out with some canned response of like we never meant to mm-hmm. this yeah, was blah, blah, our goal blah, was blah. always to blah 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 shut blah, up blah. but from the very beginning what i don't understand and this kind of goes for a lot of different things going on right now, uh, especially we're going to talk about Blizzard in a little bit here. From the very beginning, what I don't understand is why executives don't have a, a group of people that work for them that stop and say, hey, go test the internet and see how they're going to handle this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Put this on Reddit. Go to Reddit and say, man, my uncle works for HBO and they say they're going to do this. What right. do you guys think? What do you guys think? think? And then just see what happens. You Their know, username is not HBO executive. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And just test the internet. You'll, right. You'll figure things out real quick. It seems like so often people are responding to backlash when it's not it hard. Easily avoidable things. Yes. It's but not I mean, hard. Not, the whole internet thing doesn't even just think, okay, taking away Sesame Street from the kids who want to watch it. <laughs> what? No, that's fine. Yeah. <laughs> like, is that what you're like? Nobody stopped to think this might be a bad idea. So, yeah, I don't know. The whole thing is really weird. It seemed like a really, again, I said it before. It's strange. The exact move. antithesis of Jim Henson's right. wish, wishes. Right. And what, what did they think was going to happen? Yeah. What did they think? I don't know. It's yeah. They, they, I mean, they should have at least went and saw the Mr. Rogers Neighborhood documentary. Yeah. And been like, oh, that's the impact we could have. <laughs> Okay, let's do that. Like, yes. Man. Yeah. So, yeah. T- topic number two. Let's move HBO on. HBO, stop move it. On. Yeah, stop. I mean, okay. yeah, simple enough. Uh, Fortnite. Fortnite. Fortnite is something that Fox and I don't talk about a lot. I have never played it. <sighs> I've played it one time for about four minutes on a cell phone. Fortnite minutes? No, it was uh, my nephews had, they, they love it, and they play it on their cell phone. Gotcha. And one time I was like, let me try. Yeah. And I ran around for a little while. On, on a and cell phone? Man. On a I, cell phone. I, I cannot imagine controlling a third person shooter on a cell phone. It was Sounds weird. terrible. It was weird. Yeah. And then they were like, 
No, give me the. Con- You're no, bad no, at this. No, stop it. Let me show. Wait, no, hang on. No, you gotta look. No, wait. Let me see. Oh. <laughs> I was like, here, just take it. Yep. And so that's my extent of, of experience with Fortnite. But what I do know is that Fortnite just did something ridiculous, kind of crazy. Yeah. So no announcement, no forewarning, nothing like that. In the game, like you're playing the game, all of a sudden rockets just start flying around. Yep. They explode. Everything explodes. <laughs> if you're in a waiting room, it explodes. <laughs> if you're in game, it explodes. If you're at your desk, it ex- no, uh but <laughs> the entirety of Fortnite goes black. Yeah. And then for a while, if you try to log on to Fortnite, you just get what looks like a black hole. Yep. And that's it. It seems like the game itself just stopped existing. The game, yep, it fell into the singularity. Even it's like Twitter accounts and things like that were just pictures of a black hole. Yeah. And that's it. Yep. And all of this was to create hype for Fortnite Chapter 2. Everything. New map. New, like, uh, uh, weapons and things like that. Sure. Like new, they're just, it's basically Fortnite 2. And they relaunched it and they, they've got it all out now. And this, to me, was awesome. I don't care at all about Fortnite until I heard this. Right. And then here I am thinking to myself, what if more games did stuff like this? <laughs> so weird. what did you think about when you heard about it? Fox? I mean, I, I, I love the idea to me because uh, uh, my favorite part of it is that it was n- announced in no way. Right. They, they had that it was no just a, Hey, everything's exploding now. Deal with it. <laughs> like people being confused, people being upset. There were there are internet... videos of streamers being like, "Wait, what is ha- what is going on yep, right now?" Yep. Yeah, internet stories of parents like, "My kid is crying right now. I don't know what to do." <laughs> like things like that, where it's just it, it. To me, it was hilarious and bold. Yes, it's the biggest game in the world. Saying, "Nope, you don't get to play for a while," and it wasn't like you know, lots of online games do that, but they'll just say scheduled maintenance. You know, or hey, new new thing happening tomorrow. We have to go down. The you know, servers are going down for a couple hours too. Right. You know, like that's that's very standard. So I think they just wanted to. Uh, it is hilarious and also a genius way to introduce it. Oh my gosh! Not only genius, but so compelling. Nobody's ever done anything like this right, before. Right. Right. I mean, there's uh, you know, during console launches for a long time, they would purposely do this supply and demand thing where. They would supply not enough to meet the demand, right? So that there would be this like, there's hype behind the wants for the system. The the we had this, the Xbox 360 had this, the yeah. PS2 had this, right? You know where because it's such so limited, people want it more. Yeah, or it's sold out. Wow, people must love it. Yeah, exactly. And so here we are now with a game that people want to play, and they're just so like eager to play it and that hype spreads it does and again it spread to me honestly and here i am sitting <laughs> there like play it man i don't care about fortnite but this is really interesting yeah and so i wonder if there were different online games who tried to do things like that how that would work out you know if if apex legends tried to do something like that or if PUBG tried to do something like that yeah that's the temptation for them now of is, course oh that worked really well for them because it got that hype built built up so high Here's what I will say this new game essentially about Epic is they know how to stay interesting. Yeah. They absolutely know how to stay on top of the, the interest game and get people like hyped about them. Say what you will about their, you know, it's for noobs or it's for kids or whatever. It's for middle schoolers, blah, 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 whatever. Oh, I doubt they care about that. No, at all. they don't at all. No. But bottom line is, Hey, Epic does it better than anybody else. They they did a good job with this. Yeah. 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 I think Epic is is smart with their controversy, quote unquote, because the things that have been controversial, even like the we bought exclusivity of Borderlands 3 for six months, that didn't hurt anybody. <laughs> no, it like, doesn't. No, you know, you might say otherwise, uh, people that I've talked to about this. But at the end of the day, <laughs> even if it was just controversy for the, the press of it, it didn't hurt anybody. Whereas other games have in the past, like, like the Modern Warfare series, like they saw they they had a uh, the very first Modern Warfare had a scene where it was like, whoa, crazy, blew my mind, that was awesome, 
And then, so they were like, okay, let's do that again in the second one. And the second one, there's a scene in which you are literally committing a mass, a mass shooting. Right. And you're like, that just seems exploitative. Yeah. Or like, it doesn't really feel natural to the story. I didn't need to do that. Like, and so, and so instead of that, where it's like, let's be controversy for controversy's sake to get hype. It's let's get people excited about playing our game in a way that people haven't done before. And then like, I don't know. I, I, it's very smart in a way that's entire. It's, I think it's the epitome of Fortnite. Yes. Where doesn't hurt anybody. People are going to be, you know, maybe like, Oh, I want to play right now. And like upset that they can't, but then they're like, when it comes back online, they're like even more excited. Right. And well, there's an amount of interest to them not being able to, I mean, if your game crashed, or even if in the middle of the game, uh, uh, a window came up and just said, server server maintenance started and has a countdown of two yeah. days or whatever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. People get annoyed and they get frustrated. Well, what the crap is that? But the way that they did it this yes. way brings an interest Much to it. more interesting. What's yeah. going to happen? Yeah. No matter how good a movie is or at the end of the day, if you are still interested in what's going to happen, that's a good movie in some way. And if you're interested in what's going to happen after the world explodes in Fortnite, that's a good move right there. There were streams that were just the black hole. <laughs> there were like millions of people on Twitch watching people watch a black hole. Yeah. <laughs> and and like, that was it. <laughs> that is the epitome of good marketing right there. And again, yeah, huge success now, at that point. They could have just said uh, black hole crazy, right? You know, and then have that for three hours and then a thing pop up say, now it's time for chapter two for $10 or something like that. You know, like <laughs> they could have taken advantage or, you know, you, you jump like they could have taken advantage of the confusion and the hype and say, OK, we could probably make some money right now. Right. Because people are going to be interested in what happens. This is going to be chapter two. But they didn't. They just said, OK, it's the new game now. Like or the, I mean, they didn't impose another paywall or another money making opportunity they actually just got people more excited to play the game and then probably more likely to spend money in the game. Right. Because they were hyped about playing this new game. Yeah. Really smart. Yeah. And they, they did it really well. It's a lot of fun. Uh, it'll be really interesting to see how other video games respond to this. Yeah. How they, how they, uh, this do, could be do a new their own version set. of it. Yeah. Yeah. So I could definitely see PUBG like having a nuke hit or something mm, like that yeah, or, yeah, yeah. or whatever else. So no, it was, it was interesting. I liked it. I thought that was cool. Hmm. Maybe that's another episode we can do is like what other games can do this kind of thing, but for their own, <laughs> their, in their own way. All right, let's move on. We got final something topic. Else. Yeah. Last one here. Uh, so Blizzard has kind of put itself in a corner. <laughs> yes. And it, a very bad one to be in. And it needed to, it's still trying to kind of fight its way out of that. Corner. Yes. So. Because of the whole Hong, Hong Kong ban thing. We you know, did an episode about this two weeks ago. Yeah, two weeks ago. Because of this. In fact, why don't you, why don't you let them know exactly what happened? Let's catch up. So two weeks ago, well, in our episode, if you want to go ago. back and just kind of get a, our, our, our view on it, um, you should watch. It's, a, it's an episode called Blizzard versus China. Um, uh, basically, what happened was in a interview after a grand final or some huge Hearthstone event. Uh, the winner s expressed support for the protesters that are still protesting in Hong Kong. They are wanting independence from China. From China. That's a whole political situation. The 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 the, the player, the professional Hearthstone player, pr expressed um, support in a in a way of they just they said one of the slogans. Right. And as a result, Blizzard banned them for a, for twelve months and took away all of their winnings for that season. For that Hearthstone season, uh, something like ten grand. They do. They were not given money that they had won. Right. Um. <clears throat> as well as uh the two p the interviewers the the I guess they call them shoutcasters. I yeah, think that's, that's a thing, thing now. Shout and I just learned that phrase or term last week, but uh, were also fired. Uh, I don't think that was especially related. To, I don't know how those two things were intertwined, but as a result, like the world has is angry at blizzard right now uh except for the chinese government uh yeah. <laughs> the rest of the world is angry because they uh claim that blizzard basically kowtowed to communist china's uh crackdown on you know uh, the, uh, rather than support their players they supported the chinese government that is people people's understanding of the thing 
and it's resulted in a huge boycott, a lot of backlash against Blizzard in a lot of ways, including many, many uh, American politicians, including Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez, uh, AOC, like coming out and saying, hey, don't st-, like just outright <laughs> stop it outright like uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Condemning them for it, mm. condemning this American business for for doing this. So there's been some some uh, some developments in the case. Do you have you have something pulled up or? I know I... that. So Blizzard basically responded, right? And this is where things start to get a little bit weird, because Blizzard responds and says, "Hey, we have a you know a rule that is you can't say something that is offensive to a large group of people." We talked about this a couple of weeks ago, and yeah. that's the rule that they cited for taking away all his earnings and whatnot. Right. They said, well, we just want to make sure that everybody is happy watching it, that we are not taking, we are a neutral place. We don't want to be a place that is taking a stand against anything. We kind of talked about that last week. If you're going to take a stand, taking a stand against a, a communist dictatorship might be a good stand right. to take. Right. But still, uh, we want to be entirely neutral. And so because of his not neutral stance we had that, but they've backpedaled on that and said we've heard and we think it's too strict now and so we are going to reduce it by half. I think it's only six months now. Six months ban and I think and he got he's getting his, his money back. He's getting his he winnings. is getting his winnings back. The winnings he earned. The winnings he earned. The problem is that they set a precedent of punishment for support of Hong Kong. Yes. And so now they are in a place in which there are a lot of Hearthstone players that are getting punishments for supporting Hong Kong. Blizzard has come to the point now where they're issuing short bans or, or short punishments of different types right. to anyone yeah. who, within Hearthstone, within the chats, or within, you know, publicly or anything People like that, that are under their purview. Yes. Yeah, in, in the if they show any scene. sort of support for Hong Kong or any sort of political support in that way... They're issuing punishments they are punished. for that. Yeah. And I think that this is just the weirdest thing because it has, I mean, I can see why they're here and why this is happening. But like I said at the beginning of this, it's all because they've backed themselves into a corner yeah. that they need to find their way out of. Right. They backed themselves into a corner by the original, their, their original action of banning this guy. Right. Or 12 month, you know, suspension. Like, that was the original, obviously, sin that they committed. Shouldn't have done that. And instead of taking it back, they kind of just, like, they didn't, to me, as a result of, like, the, the whole six-month thing and giving the money back, really didn't change anything. It's just different punishment for the same crime. In fact, so on Twitch, I'm reading the article now. This is from The Verge. Anybody who posts Anything pro Hong Kong yeah. seems to be earning an automatic 24 hour chat ban on Twitch. Right. Which, first of all, just in your. We, we talked to. Uh, 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 dang it, I forget her name. Um, uh, Victoria oh, Tran. Victoria, yeah. Yeah, about like chat moderation and just. Just it, it, automatic ban hammer is very rarely going to be a good. A, a successful thing. thing, yeah. Yeah. But also, like. That's to me like there was this uh, controversy on a yarn uh, website that my wife was part of, like on oh, the, right. their social, about this, yeah. where if some like they would ban people who brought up Trump, if they supported Trump at all, they would ban them, and that's a terrible idea. Awful. I mean, just I mean, you could come at it from a free speech thing. I mean, that's not really right. what free speech is, but like they have the right to ban you for whatever reason they want. Right, but. That's just going to cause controversy for your problem and probably yes. make you lose money. Here's what you do it's instead. It's also make people sympathize with them. Yeah. yeah. Here's what you do instead. Okay, uh, here's our forum for China discussion. Go talk about it there. If you talk about it somewhere else, hey, we're gonna. that's going to be a problem because you're out of topic. Right. That's just true for any topic generally. Like if somebody's talking out of topic of the, the like predetermined forum topic, then yeah, like, hey, stop. Just go go here. That's where we're talking about this. Just like that. That's real simple. So that's a baffling choice right there. Just create a place for that dialogue to happen. 
and so you don't have to worry about it anywhere else. Well, to me, what's what's most frustrating about this is it's saying that pro Hong Kong sentiments are different than any other political opinion right now. Right. And yeah. unless Twitch uh, or Blizzard via Twitch starts issuing 24 hour chat bans to anybody who posts anything political, a political opinion, yeah, whether it's positive or negative or whatever else, unless you're going to do that, you were saying a pro Hong Kong opinion is unique and bad for right. some reason. And all that tells me is that, well, then Blizzard, you must be supporting China in this, right? Right. And they don't want that name. They they want to say we're neutral, but they're not neutral right yes, now. Yes, they are inherently being uh not yeah, non neutral by saying this one opinion. Yeah, if you were to say all political di- political discussion, not we don't want that here. I mean, that'd probably be a bad idea because that's just removing people from your your forum that right. might be there to talk, you know, and just create a, a community. But like. It'd be better than saying, yeah, saying no politics at all is better than saying this political opinion is is not okay, whereas right. others are. Uh, it's it's what I was saying uh, before is they have not changed anything. If you ban somebody for for twelve months for for this political situation or for their for their approval of whatever for their statement of support, and you say, you know what, we were wrong. You're only banned for six months. That's the same yeah, exact thing. Absolutely. The length of the ban is not the problem. <laughs> Losing the money, that was the problem. That was the pro- like giving the money back. Yeah, You're good less move. naughty. You- <laughs> like that's the same exact thing. Punishment at all, like one day ban would have been the same thing as a 12 month ban. Right. You are in- it's it's more of the message than the actual like strength of punishment or yeah. like the 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 severity of the punishment. So I feel like this is an unsalvable, salvageable situation at this point. I think what Blizzard needs to do now is step up and say, hey, guys, if you are within our circuit, if you are currently sponsored by Blizzard in some way or receiving earnings from Blizzard in some way, stay away from politics. This is not a political venue. I guess. Hey, people in the chat, there is a billion of you. We can't, sure, talk about Hong Kong all you want. We, we can't control you anymore. And that's the reality of the matter is they're they're trying to seem like they have control of a situation that they don't have control over. Right, right. And they're trying to save face. And in the in the like process of trying to save face, they're stepping on their own toes and screwing yeah, things yeah, up yeah. over and over and over again. And so I think what they need to do now is just step back and say, hey, political stuff, stay away from it, please. We're going to come down. Fair warning. We're going to come down pretty hard in it for a little while. Just so yeah. you guys know. That is something Victoria Tran would talk about was like for the first, you know, two weeks of introducing a new thing, we were more uh, when we, oh, that was what it was when they were bringing in a new game, like when they became oversaw the publishing of a new game right. or something. And it brought, meant a whole new community was coming into their fold. They would be more strict with their with their uh, punishment for whatever. Right. You know, for a while, just to kind of establish, hey, this is important to us. And then they would kind of lighten up. Yep. And. I think that's a similar. I mean, it's, it's a good tack to take. Uh, yeah, it's it to me. It has to be an all or nothing. Yeah, no politics or politics. Yeah, say, say hey, be apolitical, please. Be and a- o- only if you are if you sure. are receiving funds from Hearthstone from Blizzard. This is in any part way, of your contract. Yeah, part of your contract is you are apolitical. You are here to talk about the game. Yep, and not about the politics of what's going on. Yeah, and but then when it goes to the chat. We can't control chat. It's going to happen. I mean, you can control chat. You but, can, but not in any meaningful way. Right. Absolutely. And attempting to ban everybody who mentions pro Hong Kong yes. sentiments. Come on, guys. See, here's here's what I'm thinking. Same with like a forum, like create a forum for that topic rather than try to not make anybody like just put them in a certain like. If they want to seem neutral, although this would be pretty outside the purview of what hearthstone is about it's not really about the politics but it, this is clearly important to the community so like hey we brought our some of our hearthstone players to talk about this oh that'd be here's interesting. a here's an online like debate or just like roundtable discussion yeah of what's going on what do you think like create an official way to talk about that create a 
semi-controlled way to talk about that. The problem at that point is that they are so scared of China, though. Well, sure. That's what it all comes down to. <laughs> it's all cowardly because they're losing money. Right. They don't want to lose the money, which is backfiring. We talked about that because they're just going to lose money from America and other people anyway. Right. But, like, that's at the end of the day, guys, just you're, you're f- afraid of losing money. We know that that's the problem. You don't care about politics. I think if they had, again, something that people may not know is that a lot of large businesses employ people to pretend to be a lay person that is doing things online. Yeah. They'll do that with reviews. They'll do that right. with conversation in chat rooms. I think if they just had one of their social media managers create a fan started, quote unquote, fan started discord channel that is Twitch uh, or not Twitch chat, uh, Hong Kong chat, Hong Kong Hearthstone chat. Yeah. And, and then have the moderators be aware of hey, that. Here's a place for you to go. Talk yeah. And just and... be like, Hey, uh, this is a fan started channel. If you want to talk about Hong Kong, head over there. Yeah. We still have rules. We still have guidelines. Yep. You know, it has to stay civil, but you're welcome to express your opinions and debate. Yeah. The, no, no bans, no problem. Hey, we'd love for you to just head over to that, to that channel and had, uh, talk about stuff there. And you know what I think would happen? I think the channel that that Discord channel would be a little bit boring and yeah. a little bit plain. Yeah. Because I think there are very few, if any, people that are pro China in all of this. Not yeah, not not in this, not in the Hearthstone area. Right. Like, that, that are like, no, nah, China's awesome. What they're doing is great. Yes, good job, China. And so I think most of the conversation that's happening now is coming just because of Blizzard. Yeah. And if Blizzard finally says, no, nah, hey, well, we'll talk about it. All you guys right. want, go for it. There's a fan base channel right over there. People are gonna be like, "Oh, oh, well, this isn't it's exciting not anymore." Yeah, anymore. exactly. <laughs> okay, never mind. I wanted to protest Blizzard, but yeah. I can't now. So, I think there are. Guess I'll just play more Hearthstone. <laughs> I think there are ways that they could save face, and kind of like I talked about in the first place with HBO. It's so weird to me that they don't have somebody that just their exclusive job is to keep their finger on the pulse of yeah. the internet monster, and trying to, to do what they can to help maintain their face. Like right. that sounds weird, but save face and make maintain sure that they're your okay. face. So, well, that's it guys. That's what we got today. Those are our that's three our topics. Bag. Yep. We've only talked for let's be done. Yeah. Thanks for listening guys. Thank you for your support. Let us know what you think about each of these situations, about HBO and Sesame street, about uh, Hong Kong and blizzard. And of course about the one in the middle that we talked about. <laughs> you don't remember that the Fortnite, the Fortnite and the black hole this 10 minutes ago. <laughs> Thanks for listening guys. And always remember that saved games, save lives. Get your brain checked. I need to. <laughs>